MTN Sports. This is Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome into Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside King Glogley, and we've got a lot of basketball to talk about this week. Let's start with the men because they were back home. They were able to finish it out 2-0, but let's start with that NEU game because it was really close that they almost fell at home, and they led for about 43 seconds that game. We were able to pull it out with a huge game winner from Grid Osborne. Look, I'm not going to say I told you <laughs> so, but we did talk about it. We knew this NAU team was dangerous. They were very, very good. They've yes, lost a lot of close that. games. And, you know, it's big sky play. It doesn't matter how you win. Yes, it, you want to see it pretty. Yeah, you want to see some lopsided wins. But a win's a win, and the Bobcats have 10 of those in the big sky conference right now. And NAU was really hot from the field, and that's kind of what put them ahead early in that game. But where you started seeing it change a little bit was those back-to-back -back blocks in a matter of, I want to say, 45 seconds to really start turning the page for this team. But on top of that, he's now Montana State's all-time block leader as well. And special. It was yeah, so right? fast. It was so quick. And against one of the star players for NAU in a big moment. So very cool to see it just boom, tied, boom, take the lead like that. And uh, a special moment for this young man. We're going to talk about it a little bit with head coach Danny Sprinkle. But he is now the all-time leading shot blocker in program history. He's top five in rebounds, and he's top ten in points scored. Very special career, and there's still more to write. I was going to say, he might be coming for Danny Sprinkle's record from what I'm understanding, right? Yes, he's only five <laughs> points away from surpassing Danny Sprinkle for uh, in, in terms of points scored in their career at Montana State. So he's right on the cusp, and uh, it's going to be very fun to see him kind of cross over that barrier. And I'm sure he's going to cross that this week, but flipping the page, Northern Colorado, you know, bounce back win, I would say they were really able to, you know, start connecting on the three point line, which maybe is something we haven't seen in a while, especially from Tyler Patterson. How great was it to see him kind of get hot from the three? It was, it was fun. You know, another five threes for Tyler Patterson. Yeah. The third time this year he's had a game of five threes in a, in a single game, but at the same time, he's only made 22 all year. So 15 of his 22 threes in the Big Sky Conference have come in three games. So you imagine it's really been a, a very trying mentally season, mentally speaking, for, for Tyler Patterson. And, uh, you know, you got to just keep on keeping on and figure out a way to keep it going. And the really big part of that game was an 18-0 run. But really quickly, we've got to talk about Darius Brown as well. Maybe you saw the stats. He didn't have a great game scoring, but that's because he was facilitating like it was no one's business. 12 assists. I mean, let's just talk about him for a hot second. And no turnovers. Either. Yeah, right. I mean, truly just absolutely distributing. <laughs> a clean game. And as many times as mm -hmm. he's led the team offensively with points scored, now we got to see him do it as a pass first point guard, which is really where he is his most comfortable. All right, we're going to talk about that and more in just a moment, but first a break, and when we come back, we've got head coach Danny Sprinkle joining us on the Bobcat Insider. Take coverage of the Cats with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to the Bobcat Insider. I'm Keaton Glogley alongside head coach Danny Sprinkle. Bobcats coming in off a 2-0 weekend and a five-game winning streak. Wasn't particularly easy, but you got it done. And before we get into these games, I want to talk a little bit about Jabril Bello. A couple of big milestones for him. He becomes the all-time leading shot blocker in program history, and he did it in really terrific form. He got two quick blocks. Pretty special yeah. moment for Jabril Bello. Yeah, and they were, they were huge blocks, you know, uh, Jalen Cohen, they were both on him, you know, keeping him out of rhythm, but that's what Jabril's done, you know, he, he's won us games, you know, in the last four years here, you know, by him blocking shots, and he's been a, he's got tremendous timing, and, uh, you know, just happy for him, it's a heck of a milestone. Yeah, a lot of fun, and Dewey Michaels had a great yeah. message out on social media about that, too, yeah. it was fun to see him kind of congratulate Jabril. No, and that, that's Dewey, everybody that knows Dewey knows he's a big teddy bear man, he was really excited for Jabril, and and of course he did say hey there is an asterisk with the COVID year he got a bonus year but you know Dewey was a great player too a great shot blocker and uh records only stand so long yep so a very special moment for Jabril Bella and especially in the moments of that game uh the other milestone he's creeping up on here is getting over 1500 career points and yep. about to pass you on the all-time scoring well, list I hope he does only needs another five more 1800 yeah yeah but uh, I mean what's that mean like I mean when you think about your number versus what Jabril's doing and his legacy I mean it's got to be fun to watch him kind of pass this next milestone yeah no question and it just it shows you know over four years he's continued to get better and better you know he gets double teamed you know, monstered every time, or monster we call double in the post. Um, you know, and he just, he accepts it, and uh, he's getting a lot, you know, he scored a lot of points by him getting double teamed for his, for his players too. Yeah, so pretty impressive and very fun to watch what Jabril Bello is doing right now. So he's top 10 in points, he's top five in rebounds, and he's number one in block shots. And I think one of the other things that kind of stood out about his performance this weekend, uh, particularly the second game, the Northern Colorado game, really looked like he was showing some more emotion, just a little yeah. more body language. Were you seeing that too? Yeah, you know, and, and uh, you know, we had a stern message after our game on Thursday night. I wasn't happy with how we played and our effort, 
and uh, it carried into Friday's practice and to Saturday's pregame. And uh, the guys really responded. He's the leader of the team. And, uh, you know, Darius, Raekwon, him, you know, the, our older guys, you know, we're going to go as far as their energy takes us. And uh, heck, of a, heck of a performance mm-hmm. in that UNC game. But I do want to talk about this NAU game. It was a very close win, dramatic. Yeah. It was fun. And I know they don't have a great Big Sky record, but they're just such a talented team. And you could see it. I mean, they played poised, and they were very, very good in that game. Yeah, they've lost five games in the last 30 seconds. You know, I mean, even on Saturday up at Missoula, they had a one-point lead with 30 seconds left. And, and you know, Yomo, I feel bad for Coach Burkhart because they're doing a great job getting in position to win. It's just they're, they're, they're struggling to get over the hump. But they got really talented players. They shot the heck out of it against us, you know, 10 of 17 from three. And they played well. You know, they, they out-efforted us and out-toughed us, I thought. And, uh, you know, I mean, we got very lucky to win that game. And you did it by making some plays. And it was yeah. great. Osabor, who had the game-winning bucket, take us into that moment. It kind of looked like he had Bellow set up on the right side, Osabor on the left, and Darius Brown directing traffic uh, before Osabor had that game-winning shot with about three and a half seconds left. So walk us through that play a little bit. Yeah, we had both of our bigs in, and we ran the same exact play last year uh, when Xavier Bishop hit a game-winner with two seconds left against NAU. And with our, both of our bigs, we want them to roll and get to the blocks to where just in case we miss a shot we get an offensive rebound put back. And so Darius made a great read. Um, he knew Jabril, or uh, Great had a mismatch on him and got him the ball down there. And, and when Great gets it on that, on that left block, he's really hard to stop. Now, after that, though, Jalen Cohn, he made the catch coming yeah. off that inbounds pass. Yeah. He had a heck of a head of steam getting to the other side, but Osibor was there at the end to kind of help affect the shot. What were you feeling as that ball was leaving his fingertips? Yeah, well, I mean, as it was leaving his fingertips, I knew it was late. Yeah. I was just glad he didn't pull up for a jump shot. And, uh, but it was the same exact scenario as last year. You know, Jalen Cohn had the ball driving downhill with a chance to win it. And uh, luckily, the luckily time ran out. But our guys did a really good job, you know, making him turn. You know, when he caught it, you know, if he just gets a full head of steam, he's probably at the rim and scoring. You know, Robert Ford did a great job cutting him off and making him change direction, which gave us that split second. That's all it needed. Yeah. Got the win, and that's all that matters. Uh, we got to talk about Darius Brown a little bit. You know, we talked so much about his scoring and how many times he carried this team offensively mm-hmm. by putting the ball through the hoop. Hasn't been scoring as much lately, but that's because he's been distributing 12 yep. assists in this Northern Colorado game. I think uh, a lot of people maybe forget this is kind of who he wants to be. Is that right? Yeah, he's the happiest guy in the locker room, and he scored two points. You know, that doesn't happen nowadays with kids. You know, and he, he's a true point guard. He's old school. Uh, you know, 12 assists and zero turnovers. You know, that's what was really impressive. And he's done a great job. He's more happy when his teammates are getting shots and making shots. And that's why he's, you know, been a great, you know, factor for us, you know, going forward in conference and in the first 12 games. Well, and on top of that, in the UNC game and in that win, he also had three steals in the span yeah. of about two minutes, kind of in that second half, really turned the tide while UNC was trying to put some scoreboard pressure on. Yeah. Uh, he's two and a half steals per game in the big sky, which is yeah. first. What do you see in how he plays defense and just his vision on that side of the ball? Yeah, he's got great instincts, you know, and he almost had another steal, uh, which was huge. But, you know, Northern Colorado had all the momentum. You know, they cut it to nine or ten, and he got two steals in a row. We got dunks and leak outs, which, you know, just shows, like, it's, it's basically an assist for him, too. But we needed that at those times because that broke the game open. And finally, Tyler Patterson got going a little bit yeah. in that UNC game. That had to be a big Tremendous. relief to see him put some shots in. It was. You know, he, he puts the work in. You know, he, he gets extra shots in. It's only a matter of time, you know, with him and its confidence. But... You know, we need him, and we're going to need him down the stretch to make those shots. No doubt. Coming up next, it's Weber State and Idaho State. So, nice quick little road trip, and we're back to work this week, Coach. Yeah, never stops in the big sky. You know, two tough games. (laughs) All right, so that's what's going on with uh, men's hoops. We're going to take a break, and when we get back, we'll bring back Ashley Washburn and turn our attention to the first-place women's basketball team. For head coach Danny Sprinkle, I'm Keaton Gologli. This is the Bobcat Insider. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. We're back on the Bobcat Insider. I'm Keaton Gologan alongside Ashley Washburn. So the men are 10-2. and two. They're in second place in the big sky. We're going to turn our attention now to the women's basketball squad, which despite a tough weekend, they're still in first place, Ashley. Tough week and tough road trip. They started out at Northern Arizona, and it was a game that, you know, the first go around, it was a five-point differential between the two 29-point loss this time, which we've talked about before of how tough this road trip is to even get to Flagstaff in the beginning and the elevation. But, you know, you could say that maybe it attributed to that. But really, it was the turnovers. But despite the loss, they were able to regroup, bounce back in northern Colorado, and they still have a one-game lead in the big sky. And that's impressive. And that's just showing this maturity, showing the depth on this team, and being able to 
able to come back and get that win. Because even though that was such a disappointing loss and it was so lopsided, you still had to win that game. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're tied for first place right now because Montana has gotten hot. So you got to find a way to bounce back. And I'll be interested to hear from Coach Binford how they were able to get things rolling in the right direction. And I'm glad you mentioned Montana because the way that the Big Sky is shaping out right now, Cat Grizz in just two weeks now really could be the decider for that Big Sky championship. But yes, the bounce back that we saw on Saturday is what you really want to see from a team. And just going back to the non-conference, it was a tough non-conference for men and women, but you're seeing it pay dividends now because they were able to throw that game, you know, into the trash, regroup as a team, and win with such a dominant fashion on Saturday. And that's really what you're going to need in these last couple games in the Big Sky because that tournament is right in that rear view, and it's getting close. It's coming up quick. Yes. And it's been amazing how often we've mentioned the non-conference schedules playing a role, playing a factor in this Big Sky season. And we're going to see how it plays a role in this final stretch because it's really going to come to light in that Big Sky championship, which is just coming up in a couple weeks. Those are all questions that we're going to talk to Coach Benford coming up after the break. Up next on Bobcat Insider. There's more coverage of the Bobcats online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Bobcat women's head basketball coach. And Montana State is still sitting on top of the Big Sky standing back-to-back -back weeks with a one-game lead after splitting the road one and one. And, you know, let's just dive right into that Thursday game. I'm not going to beat around on the bush on this <laughs> one because I know you don't want to beat around the bush either. 29-point loss at NAU, and it was just a really uncharacteristic performance for this team. What kind of went on in that Thursday game, you think? Uh, a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, first quarter is a little bit back and forth and uh, had a couple quick shots, transition layups, and uh, uh, a couple turnovers that are uncharacteristic against the press and just kind of got out of got, got out of there. And um, we just didn't regroup, and I didn't do a great job of kind of uh, locking them in. But uh, we turned the page on Friday and had a great practice and, and prep for the Saturday game. That elevation is tough, but then you also factor in how fast NAU is. I mean, we talked about it last week of just how fast they are in the open court, and you knew you needed to go in there and try to slow them down as much as they could in that transition offense, but they were able to get away with 19 points on that end of the court. Uh, what do you think could have been done differently to slow them down and you know, maybe looking forward? Because I think that there's a really good chance you could see each other again in Boise in just a couple weeks. Yeah, a couple factors. Uh, number one is our shot selection. Uh, they did a great job of just getting us to settle for what they wanted you know so they changed up their defenses uh, we didn't respond uh, correctly we took some quick shots um, and a little bit un uncharacteristic you know some of those were good shots some of those were just average shots and just really didn't utilize the clock to make them guard and so now you're in a position with a quick shot and then you're on the run I think uh, if we really improve our shot selection getting the ball moved a little bit more could be a factor but then on the shot just getting in position for transition defense and that was one of the areas where you know we've always talked about what our responsibilities are in your transition defense defense starts on the shot of your shot and when you take great shots that makes sense for everybody everybody's able to get to those positions and we just certainly didn't do that consistently enough and then you have somebody like Reagan in the open court that's super fast we were just kind of in a in a race that we weren't winning and you want to win the race in the first kind of four feet and we were at a disadvantage there they did a great job of leaking out and getting behind us and those little things will, will for sure be working on this week and just getting better of once again we just want to be great in that that area of the floor because a lot of games are one are lost in transition defense and that's a high percentage area for for teams to score and for any team I can imagine that the morale is pretty low after a loss like that but you guys were able to stick together regroup and really bounce back in a dominant way at Northern Colorado how were you able to regroup and you know such a quick turnaround because you really only had 24 hours to get back into game mode uh, great kids, great chemistry, uh, great staff. Uh, I think, uh, you know, kind of the roller coaster of our preseason, too. Um, we've had a lot of road, road trips that have been difficult, and we, we've had some splits where we've been able to turn that page. And I think uh, that's the sign of really strong chemistry of knowing, like, we didn't get the job done, including me. You know, we all have to take ownership in that. And, uh, and we, we took what we had from it. We knew that we had an opportunity on Saturday to be better, um, and we certainly did that. Well, that's when you can kind of see those non-conference games really come into play. But a player that really, really bounced back that game was Darian White. 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. I mean, when is the last time that you've seen a stat line like that? Because I'm looking at the paper, you know, having to take a double take because it's just it's just great ball, ball play at that point. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
you know, her stat line, I, th <laughs> it seems like that's that's something we've come to know from mm -hmm. Darian White to, as far as her rebounding ability at 5'6". But, um, you know, prior to going into that game, you know, even the Friday night at practice, just kind of walking around, letting the assistants uh, run some of the breakdown drills with the garden posts. Uh, sometimes head coach's job is just to kind of grab a kid or um, just remind them of their, of their gifts and their strengths. And uh, one of the things I just told Darian, I said, we, we need you to be attack-minded from the start. Um, we need you. Um, and I, and when I just talked about uh, the rest will come when you're attack minded and you know sometimes uh, Darian is, is too on the unselfish side getting her teammates involved and I thought that game with just how she set the tone attacking the paint the rest came and, and obviously um, assists is always on her stat line finding her teammates um, but we kind of go by her edge that she brings to the table and then I thought Cola Bad Bear responded really talked about um, even with the team how we need to insert Cola or earlier in the game we just didn't do a great job of that on Thursday and she's a big factor of who we are and what we do and what we're capable of doing and I thought just the two of them the interior got going then the shooters got going um, we really shared the ball well um, 20 assists is obviously on the on the higher side for us for for a team game but I think uh, we just played at a pace that was more comfortable for us um, where everybody got touches and those shots made sense sense for everybody and believe it or not, Montana State actually got a little help from over the hill this week. They were able to beat Northern Arizona. So you've got a one-game lead over Montana and only six games left and starting with Weber State and Idaho State this week. What's the biggest thing you guys need to focus on so you can make that push for hopefully another Big Sky Championship? Yeah, I mean, we've really talked about um, just uh, what can we get accomplished in mm -hmm. six games as far as uh, being a well-oiled machine in those champion habits of how can we grow and, and not really focus on what's going on with the rest of the conference. We just want to be playing our best version of Bobcat basketball by the time we hit the tournament. Um, and transition defense is one of those areas we want to be better. We want to be hitting on all cylinders of what that looks like every time a shot goes up. But the same thing goes for our offense. Uh, we feel like we've, we're, we're pretty consistent in those first 10 seconds of what shots we're looking for. But when those things aren't available, okay, how do we get better in the next 20 seconds of what that great shot looks like for us on the offensive end? So putting those two pieces together, there's a lot of growth that is still um, possible for this team. We, we love the, the group that we have, um, but I still feel like there is a lot of growing to do so that's exciting for our team uh, and we're in a time period where uh, teams are either burned out this time of year or they're su super excited about being in the gym and I feel like our kids are chomping at the bit and they're hungry as ever and that's always an exciting thing for a coach this time of year. Well it's always good to know that there's still room to grow as well heading into this final stretch so thank you as always coach that game on Thursday tips off at 7 and then Saturday against Idaho State at 1 p.m. which will also be the no more stolen sisters awareness game so if you can don't forget to wear your red. We'll be back on Bobcat inside with King Gologli after the break. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. Ashley Washburn alongside King Gologli. Just a couple more minutes left, and you know, we're headed into this final stretch. Six games left of the regular season, and this is really where it comes down to for both teams. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. And for the women's side, you know, they're going to be at home. You got Weber State and Idaho State, two of the teams kind of toward the bottom end of the Big Sky. If you win these two games, you've got a shot where Cat Grizz in two weeks is setting up as a battle for first place. Absolutely, and they've got a one game lead, which I wouldn't say is necessarily very comfortable because when you've got these two teams, Coming into your home court, there's never been more of a target on your back. And you do see Cad Grizz in just a couple of weeks. And how great of a game would that be? for both of these teams going at it, but it really starts with these two weeks, so we'll see what happens. But on the men's side, you know, they're sitting primed in second right now, right behind Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington just really seems to try to close out every single game. At some point, you think that they're eventually going to lose one, but at this point for Montana State, they really just need to focus on winning every single game that they can, because once you get to Eastern Washington after that, you're hopefully playing for that Big Sky Championship. No doubt. And first and foremost, you want to make sure you have one of those top two seeds, because mm -hmm. it's such an advantage with an extra day off in there, in terms of the way the scheduling is. And Weber State is right on the Bobcats' heels. They survived that Idaho State this weekend with a double overtime win. They're a game and a half back of Montana State for that second spot. So the Bobcats have to go in there on Thursday and take care of business. And it's not going to be easy against that Weber State team. And it's a two versus three, if I'm correct, on that men's side, right? Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be a fun one. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's what's coming up. So the men will be on the road at Weber State on Thursday for 7 o'clock tip-off and then Saturday at Idaho State at 6 o'clock. And the women are back home at the brick. You can catch them on Thursday at 7 o'clock or on Saturday at 1 p.m. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Bobcat Insider. For Ashley Washburn, I'm Keaton Gologli, and we'll talk to you again coming up next week.